G'day, I'm Peter Hardy Atkins and this is day 30 of my adventures with the Walkira QRX350. We got off to a bad start. When it came out of the box it was not ready to fly. It took four hours to get it flying and it flew beautifully. I was bewitched. On day two I decided to try the GPS functions. I bet a lot of you would have been trying GPS functions on day one. And they didn't work very well. And a week went by and I got one good hover hold. I should explain that for me hover hold is the first step in GPS. If you can't do hover hold forget all the other functions. Work on it, work on it, work it till you do get a reliable hover hold in GPS. Okay. It has taken 30 days to achieve an every time hover hold. There have been a lot of problems. I want to show you a few of the problems. I want to show you some of the triumphs. I want to show you the current success. It is going well. This device does fly just as well as the advertisements make it seem. Let's start reviewing the evidence with some of the bad examples. This was the stage where I didn't know whether I had a problem with clouds, I didn't know whether I had a problem with batteries, maybe the machine was defective, or maybe I didn't know what to expect. I was really struggling. Armed. Throttle up. Trim forward. Okay. Looking good. Hover hold on. Coming backwards, coming backwards, coming backwards, coming backwards, coming backwards. Coming, it's slowing, it's slowing. No, the altitude has remained good. Tracking left, tracking left. Now, what's going to happen now? I think we've got a hold. It's going forward. That's near the spot where I flicked the switch. It's on the spot. We have a hover hold. Coming back, coming up, coming back, coming back, coming back. Dropping out of hover hold. Okay, I didn't like that at all. Landing. Okay. So what do we make of that? I'm not sure. But I didn't like it. And now let's look at the triumph of last night, where all of a sudden I got absolutely rock solid hover hold every time. magic feeling. After 30 days, yesterday, suddenly to have recognised what was going wrong, no it wasn't the clouds, no it wasn't the batteries, no there was no fault with the machine, the operator needed to understand how it was supposed to work. And wouldn't it have been great if the manual had had anything to say on the subject? Let me explain it to you. If you have a Devo 7 transmitter and you're flying a Walkira, you go from the manual mode to hover hold and if you're really brave return to home. In manual mode everything just flies like any other old quadcopter. In hover hold, set up the way I have it now, total lock. I'm almost prepared to bet any day of the week. We, we have more to be learned on that subject. In a multi-wee system before you got to hover hold, 
there would be a switch function which took you to level or angle mode. And in level and angle mode, the pilot has to trim the aircraft so that it's ready to go to hover hold. Now, Walkura have done away with that stage, but you need to get your brain around it. So I had to get my head around this, and suddenly the penny dropped. The aircraft must get itself into the mood for hover hold when you switch it on. And that is the truth. And in my situation, it was never getting anywhere near that because I kept adding forward trim. Every time I took off, if there was a bit of a breeze blowing, I'd push the trim forward. Mistake. You've got to get the aircraft flying so that in still air, it climbs vertically from a horizontal launch point. And you've got to be accurate about that. I mean really accurate. And for me, it involved $9 invested in two new spirit levels. You'll see them in a minute. Having set up a truly accurate level base plate, I then found that from that launch, it never went vertically. It always flew backwards. That was why I was adding the forward trim. So now I had to do something which would get the aircraft to launch vertically without fiddling with the trim. So what did I do? I changed the length of the legs. Here. It's no secret. These are the back legs. And on the back left hand leg, two five cent Australian coins. On the back right hand leg, oh sorry, I've got that the wrong way around. <laughs> on the back right hand leg, two five cent Australian coins. On the back left hand leg, three five cent Australian coins. That has the effect on the launch pad of tilting the aircraft very slightly forward and very slightly left. And under those circumstances, in still air, it always climbs vertically off a horizontal launch pad. That's what had to happen. If you have a problem with hover hold, I'm pretty certain that's your problem. This aircraft needs to fly with the trims very close to the neutral position on all axes. And so to today's test. About to do the calibration check. Plug in. Aircraft going through its own checks. That's the left hand light. Aircraft check looks okay. Switching off, and then we've got satellites. So there are one, two, three, four. So we've got eight satellites within view of the worker at the moment. That's masses. Um, putting the plug into the compartment and closing the door. Now, calibration. High throttle, rear cyclic, flashing light. Forward roll, horizontal roll. And your rotation, waiting for the lights. We should have at least nine seconds. We're watching this one, high speed flash. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, ten seconds, that's just about perfect. Now, to do the gyro calibration check, throttle down, back right. Gyro calibration check, okay. Throttle high, back right, left, back right. Accelerometer. Uh, calibration fine. The aircraft is now ready to fly. I'm going to do an arm check. Throttle has to be low for an arm check, silly Peter. Armed, disarmed. This aircraft is ready to fly. Check ready. Lifting off.
Okay, it's flying forward slightly. Could be we've got a little tailwind, just adding a bit of back trim. Pretty good on the roll axis. Just facing a little south for some reason. Not quite sure why that is. Anyway, up you go. I'm going to take it for two meters. And then when I've got it absolutely as I want it at two meters, I'm going to take my right thumb forward with the index finger to find that switch. Fraction too low. I found the switch, it's locked. And I'm walking around it. This is the surest way to tell if it is really locked. And it is, absolutely. As locked as you can get. Happy, happy, happy. My thumb and forefinger have stayed very close to that switch. I'm now pressing it upwards. It's unlocked and it's wandering off, see that? Proof positive that it was locked up until that moment. And now I'm landing. All over, test complete. Couldn't pass much better than that. I'm looking forward to taking a little time consolidating and getting used to the GPS functions generally, but I think I will very soon be ready to take on the intelligent orientation controls and maybe even the return to home. Who knows? We will see. But I am now very confident that when you understand how the GRX 350 is supposed to work, it does work beautifully.